What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country. Up front is a 3.3 liter V6 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Town & Country for a couple of reasons. First of all, I grew up with them but also the fact that this is one of those cars that I saw everywhere for the last two decades and yet now they're getting hard to find. You see it everywhere, you see it everywhere, you see it everywhere, and then you don't see it anymore. And so before these vans get incredibly rare and drift into obscurity, I'm going to review one. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you'd get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 3.3 liter under the hood, making 180 horsepower. Now this generation was only offered with V6s, however, for the longer wheelbase and other trims, there was actually a bigger V6, the 3.8 liter that offered 215 horsepower. So this is a base model town and country. You're gonna be very aware of that. And so it just gets the 3.3 liter with the 180 horsepower. Now I really like this engine and that is a big draw to me to this car is the V6. The reason I say that is because in the 90s, the town and country actually shook things up by offering a V6, everyone tried to compete. The Toyota Previa failed because it didn't make the power that the V6 had and they couldn't shove it into a mid-engine design. So for a while, the Chrysler Town & Country was the golden standard when it came to minivans. And with that V6 power, it's very obvious why. It has enough oomph to get around and not feel luggish and slow. And that to me is important when driving a car. Now, like I said, paired to it is a four-speed automatic. Now there were two four-speed automatics offered, of course, for the different engines. However, they're both four-speed autos you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between the two. They're fine, they do the job. I'm not complaining. Last but not least about the Chrysler Town & Country, of course it is front wheel drive. So that's about out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three white faced gauges. Off to the left is my fuel, in the center is my speedometer, and off to the right is my coolant temperature and what gear I'm in. I do not get a tachometer in here. Not that you really need one because it is an automatic and only ever offered an automatic, but still, interesting to me. On the steering wheel on the left and right, I have my cruise control options, and then I just have the airbag in the center, of course, with the horn. The overall look and feel of the steering wheel, obviously very dated by modern standards, but this is very typical of what you would get from Chrysler in this era. Most of the vehicles had a steering wheel like this, or very similar. Off to the left, I have a climate control vent as well as my headlight switches. And then moving on to the door, of course I have my lock and unlock as well as my power windows and venting windows for the very, very back. Those are power as well, which is a very, very nice option. Moving into the center, I have three climate control vents, the hazard switch and the radio. This was a very, very typical radio put into pretty much all Chryslers of the era. I like it, you know, it functions well. The buttons have good feedback and I've grown up with one of these radios. My parents have an 04 Chrysler Pacifica, so it got the same one, so I'm very, very familiar with it, and I've grown to like it. Then I have the climate controls, which are labeled climate control, <laughs> and off to the left, I have my fan speed, temperature in the center, where to send it off to the right, as well as my rear defrost, rear wiper, AC, recirculating, all that stuff, which I like the fact that the AC button actually is a van and not just any other Chrysler. I like that little touch. Then we do have a little cubby and we have pop out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 2005 Chrysler Town & Country. And for a lot of cars, it's sort of a joke when I do the big friggin' bottle test, but here it's important. And so I'm happy to report that the 05 Chrysler Town & Country does in fact pass the big friggin' bottle test. Hallelujah. <laughs> Then I do get a 12 volt outlet. I get more storage down below, of course, because it is a minivan. And then I get an open center aisle. Now the owner has a cargo net here, but that could be easily removed. And so if you do wanna go from the front to the back seats, you can actually do so without getting out of the vehicle. And I like to see that in vans. Adds a little bit of usability that we'll talk about towards the end of the video. Now the seats are very comfortable. They are manual. Like I said, this is a base model and they're cloth. They're not heated. They're not power. They're not massaging. 
but I think they've held up really well. I like the look of them just nostalgically for my own sake, and overall, I like it a lot. But speaking of seats, we do have two more rows of seating, so let's go do some backseat reviews. All right, so today I am particularly thankful for this pass-through in the middle of the town and country because it is currently 25 degrees. That feels like 14. So that's super cool, but I could stay inside the vehicle when getting into the back seat. Love that. Now, I wouldn't particularly call it graceful, but uh, it's doable. And I did it. So now that we're in the back of the 2005 Chrysler Town and Country, there's a couple of interesting things. First of all, as you'll see, this is kind of an interesting seating arrangement. Now, there is a couple different ways you could get the seats optioned here in the Town and Country. This one leaves an aisle on the passenger side. So then two people, one person would sit here, one person would sit there, and then there's an aisle over to our right. This is very like Ford E-Series van feeling or you could get it with two captain's chairs tons of different options but this is the base and so the seats themselves are decently comfortable my knee is coming close to hitting this seat but what's funny is that sitting on the right side i'm actually sitting in the center of the car which is kind of interesting i get grab handles back here over around here you can't really see it down there there is a 12 volt outlet which is super usable on long journeys and overall the space back here especially for a kid i'm 511 i'm not a small guy i fit back here pretty decently as kids you're not going to have any issue at all now let's go hop into the third row now from back here Seats are the same, knee room, not hitting the seats in front of me, headroom great. I could actually sit back here like a normal adult and I don't have to change anything. I absolutely love that. I get cup holders back here as well. Two on this side, one on this side. I get my own light. I get some nice laundry hooks here. I mean, what's not to love? One more thing before we get on to anything else, I do wanna talk about the sliding doors. Now they are manual. However, when you open them, the car automatically puts its hazards on. I found this to be really interesting and actually a really, really smart idea. So when anyone is exiting the vehicle, surrounding cars, passing traffic, will know, hey, someone's getting out or at least sort of get their attention so they'll know to get out of the way. Very, very smart that you don't see in all minivans. But with that cool feature out of the way, let's go hop around the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Chrysler Town and Country. Key in here, pull up, and now we are in the back. Now, this is the era of stow and go. However, the base models did not get it where these seats would fold flat into the ground. So unfortunately, this does not have that. However, I do have a jack over here, and I do have some nice little storage options. But other than that, nothing too crazy. The struts do go out over time. That's why I'm holding it with my right hand. But other than that, nothing insane. But if you remove the seats, you have so much space inside of here. I mean, really, truly fantastic space. Now we got to talk about the looks, and this is quintessentially the definition of macaroni styling for me. Macaroni styling is a phrase I coined that's a vehicle that isn't outwardly pretty. It probably wouldn't win a design contest. It's a little mushy, a little blobby, a little round, but I grew up with it, so I have that rich nostalgia with it, and I love it for that. Just like growing up on Kraft Mac and Cheese, it's a comfort food. This car, visually, is a comfort food for me. I think it is one of the better looking town and countries. I think the modern one is okay, and then the 90s ones are cool. But I don't know, I, there's just something warm and fuzzy about driving this car, at least someone my age, someone that grew up in the 2000s. I was born in 97, so this was right around my era when I was, you know, eight years old. I mean, what eight-year-old isn't interested in cars? That's why I love this car so much. But let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country? I haven't actually brought a Town & Country to the channel before. I've done a Dodge Grand Caravan and I've done the newer Pacifica, but not actually a Town & Country. And so I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to realize that I really love this car. This car is so, so useful. Oftentimes here in America, you'll see these old 15, 20 year old minivans being used as work vans by electricians and plumbers because they're reliable, yet they're spacious. You take the seats out of this and you might as well be renting a U-Haul. Now, it is a Chrysler, so reliability is going to be on your mind. Of course, with any conversation with Chrysler, reliability is going to come up. But I'm happy to say that in the 105,000 miles this car has covered, the owner said that 
they haven't really had an issue. Oil changes, regular maintenance. Now, the parking brake once got stuck, but it's fixed now, hasn't happened again. In terms of a car, this has been pretty reliable. And in terms of a Chrysler, it's downright unfathomable how well this car has held up. And that's what I love. I love everyday heroes like this car because no one sat around and saved the town and country. I don't think anyone on purpose bought one of these new to hold on to and keep for their collection. These cars were used and abused. They were designed to take that brunt, to take that sort of life. That's why I love minivans so much. They're just honest heroes. And it's rare that anyone gives them the time of day. They're heroes that go rather unthanked. Well, today I'm changing that. Thank you, Chrysler Town & Country, for all the road trips, for all of the long nights bringing large items home from the store. Thank you for all the soccer practices and football practices and band practices. Thank you for all of the spills that are so deeply seeped into the carpet that not even the Ghostbusters and their proton packs could get it out. Thank you for all of the early mornings and late nights. Thank you for getting us and our stuff where we needed to go. It might not have been the classiest mode of transportation or the coolest or the most hip at the time, but it worked. And these vans continue to work. Chicago's relaxing favorites while you work. 93.9 Light FM. Huge thank you to Sean for letting me take out his Chrysler Town and Country. This thing was really, really fascinating to drive. You know, this is like meeting a local celebrity, something I've seen for so long, and yet now here I am. That's so cool. Sean is absolutely awesome. I also recently reviewed his Acura ILX. He's been a great help to the channel. He's a downright awesome dude, and I appreciate him very, very much as we drive over these terrible Chicago roads. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.